Hey, Rovers of the Wild. Welcome back for Hit Part 2. That's 2. My name's French, I'm not really French. Uh, I've actually decided to break the hip into three parts. I know it's going to be a little nauseating to talk about the hip. There's just so much going on around here. So what I'm actually going to do is talk about hip flexion, maybe a little bit of external rotation abduction in this video. We're always trying to correlate it to running, so mainly hip flexion, because hopefully we're not going to be getting a ton of deviation here. No knee structure is obviously going to hold itself right. The last video, I'm going to talk about hip extension and hamstring injuries, because obviously that's a big deal, both distal hamstring, a lot of proximal hamstring stuff, and just maybe some of the myths around hip extension training and how we go about getting better hip extension overall. So as for hip flexion, basically what I want to talk about first of all is injuries that surround the hip. And we usually just think hip flexion strain, right? In the previous video, we talked about possible pinching with internal rotation and maybe some labral issues. When we talk about hip flexor strains, we, it's really common in trail runners because of the ups and downs, a lot of hill climbing, pounding down the hill. And maybe we've got a strain. The number one thing that we usually do when we get a hip flexor strain start stretching that puppy, okay? So what we know 100% from a research standpoint is how you both get and keep tendinosis, which tendinosis is just basically uh, inflammation of the tendon. Tendinopathy means I've got inflammation and i got pain. So when I start having pain and I've got tendinosis, what I'm getting is compression on that tendon. How do you compress something? You push a bone against it. What's a really good way to compress your hip flexors? Take them into a big old hip flexor stretch. Is this bad? No, but when it's flared up, you're gonna run that bone into especially the psoas, not so much the TFL or a big guy that we can grab here. But when we start doing that, we never give it a chance to basically just relax, deflame, get out of that sensitive state, and then all of a sudden we're, we're creating our own issue. So what we do need to do, which we're gonna talk about a little bit, is we need to be able to load the hip flexors without causing compression. We give some ideas on that. So, got hip flexor strains, let's say we hit, we fast forward it, and let's say we don't have any injuries yet, we're going to get to the injury treatment second. Let's say I just need better hip flexion, because we're movement optimists, right? So I want to imagine that everybody out there doesn't have any pain yet, so I want to stay out of pain. What do I need to do, just like the previous video where we worked on hip and turn rotation, I want to improve my, my flexion of my hip. So we call that leg drive, right, when we're in gait training or running. And I need really good hip flexion. We actually know from research again that it may be more important to have better hip flexion than hip extension because as I go through hip flexion, I wind all these pretty structures up that everybody likes to look at, and then they get to let go with a bunch of elastic energy. So that's efficiency, right? Rubber band let go instead of having to dig and use those muscles in a concentric fashion. So if I lack hip flexion, first thing we may want to look at, which we're going to look at in the last video, is what are these guys doing? Are they tight? Are they stiff? Because that's going to limit this. So let's say for this video's sake that they're not, and I just, for some reason, can't get this hip into flexion. First thing we want to do is we want to see what's my active range of motion. So if you remember last video, we did our hip car. So we went through the whole range of motion here. Well, how high can I just actively get my hip into flexion? So for a runner, in particular sprinter, we know we need 120 degrees. So we're starting here, 120 degrees of hip flexion at least. Again, last video we talked about owning the full range of motion. So the motions in the middle are very safe. Our brain likes them. So I would like to see upwards of 160 degrees here, right? I can even do a little bit better. So now to see if there's a difference between passive and active, all you gotta do, lift that knee up. Is it higher than you could do on your own? Yeah, it usually is. So now how do we start to train that? It's pretty darn simple. You can use a wall or a door, or door frame or something if you need to. But just kind of like our same functional range conditioning principles, we want to start to do what we call either passive liftoffs. I'm going to show you a passive end range hold. I just think it's a really good drill and we can kind of put it our hip in a different, uh, basically range of motion here. So if I stiffen my body up and I bring that hip up as far as I can passively, now what I'm going to try to do over a 10 second time frame is let go and hang on to that. You want to talk about some work. So this is training the hip flexors in a very short position which we rarely do. Hold for 10 seconds, can you see this thing's dropping, right? Let it relax. Maybe the next time I come up, I bring that hip up and I bring it into a little bit of abduction. And now I'm going to try to hold there. And you're working. Right? Sometimes give yourself a target. Keep your hand there. You tend to lower your hand with it, so maybe it's a target outside of your own hand. Hold, 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 breathe. 
Try not to lean, but relax. Really, really easy way if we're not limited by the posterior structures to just start working on getting better hip flexion. So now, let's jump over real quick. Let's say I've got a little tendonitis, I've got a little pinching in my hip. Well, our big generalized theme of how to get over an injury is calm shit down, build it back up, okay? So if I'm gonna calm stuff down, we've got all sorts of ways to calm stuff down. We call it desensitizing the system, right? I can foam roll, I can use my stick, I could slap biofreeze on there, I could go get a massage, I could put tape on it, you could come see somebody like me. Tons of stuff to desensitize the system. Once I desensitize it, which means hopefully I have less pain with the motion that hurts. Now I wanna coax myself into that motion in varying different positions and at levels of intensity. So let's say, simply, when you're walking or say you go upstairs, as you swing your leg through, there's pain, okay? Well maybe, if you get down on the ground, so now I'm, my brain and my body is in a different frame of reference, right? I'm not upright. And let's say, as I rock back, I have no pain in my hip. Well, this is hip flexion, it's the same thing, but maybe we can, we can run interference. If anybody ever played basketball, I think of it like running a pick. You don't know what's coming, but you can't get any further. It's kind of like a block. So I'm gonna get past that block, right? Now, let's say I wanna get really fancy, and I wanna really dig into hip flexion here. So maybe as I go back, I kind of lean off the side, so now I'm really getting into internal rotation and hip flexion here. Right? Maybe I come off this way. You just play around with this stuff. So let's say I go through all that and I'm feeling pretty good. Now, what did I say? We gotta calm stuff down, we gotta build it up. So now I'm kind of coaxing myself into the range of motion that used to hurt me. I gotta start loading it. And remember the very first thing I said, we don't wanna load it with compression. So it could be as simple as I start right here and I simply try to lift my knee up in my hand. There's no pain. You're loading your hip flexor without compression, right? Maybe you make this, you sit back in your hips so there's no compression. Now I'm gonna try to slide my leg forward. It's not loaded. When we load things for the purpose of basically bolstering a tendon, we wanna go for about 30, 45 second duration. That's where we're actually gonna get pain relief. As we hold a muscle in an isometric hold, we get analgesia, pain relief. That's also the time frame that we need to actually start making like plastic change in the, the cell of the muscle itself. So think 30, 45 second holds, but this is where you just get creative, right? Think, I need my hip to be slightly flexed, no compression, I need to create force or load, right? Could be sitting in a, a Roman chair at the gym and doing leg lifts, right? These old school exercises don't have to be fancy. That's hip flexion. So now, I'm gonna give you one more hip flexion drill that I think is really, really cool because the more novel we can get with movement, the less our brain is gonna know what to do with it, and we stand a really good chance of not having pain, okay? So, I like to get slide plates at home. You can use towels on like hardwood floor, or paper plates on carpet. This one looks a little, maybe it looks a little kinky, but it's okay. So, lay all the way on the floor, arms out to the side, get your knees right in the middle of your slide plates here. And what I want you to imagine is you're gonna push your knees into the floor and pull your hips up off the ground all in one move. Told you a little kinky, right? But what are we doing? We're loading the hip flexors from a neutral position in a position that we hardly ever do hip flexion, right? And we are loading these puppies. Now you can hold here and drive and back down. Really good way to start loading, okay? So let me see if I've got any more notes for it let you guys go here. So as we go through load, I'll kind of touch on this, but I don't like to get too detailed with you guys. And I always suggest send me a private message, send me a comment or something if you have a specific question. When we're going through loading, we want to be safe. It's just like if you've ever worked with a physical therapist, a chiropractor, any kind of movement practitioner, we usually start with an isometric hold is what we're talking about today. It's where I get into a range of motion and I just hold that static position with force or tension. The next step would actually be eccentric loading. So I'm lengthening under tension. So maybe I, I get my slide plate here and I'm starting neutral and now I'm gonna take this back, driving my knee down into the ground, right? That would be an eccentric load. The next thing I would wanna do 
is we're going to go ballistic with it. And while we go ballistic, we may play around with a lot of different positions, again, to make sure that we're tricking our brain into a little bit of a novel movement so it feels safe. But ballistic with a hip flexor drill could be skipping. So I know as runners, we know what, we tend to know what like A skips, B skips. But what if you just went out and just skipped and like power skips, right? So you're skipping for height and you don't have to go anywhere. But I'm really driving that hip flexor up. And maybe I put a band on here and I have to try to drive through, right? I get a lot of my runners, in particular sprinters, I call it a Nordic skier. Like we don't get a whole lot of cross country skiing in Birmingham. But if I was gonna look like a big cross country skier, now I can add a hip flexion, right? A big ballistic float. We can add force. So I hope you guys get the idea of how creative and like actually how you can use really simple exercises to start rehabbing some of the things you got going on. So we talked about how to get better hip flexion when you don't have pain. Hopefully some ideas how to get you out of pain if you do have it, and then also how to build you back up. Last video on hip, we're gonna go through hip extension, some hamstring injuries, maybe some protocols for that. And I'm also gonna tie it all together with a little like just hip mechanics overall for running. Uh, the video after that, my favorite of all, we made you two just because it's going to be on breathing. So we're going to get into core. So you got to talk about breathing. We're going to do that. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. Give me a direct message. We'll see you next week.